guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about what happens when our patient has a cecal volvulus. So let's get started. So what is a cecal volvulus? The term volvulus is derived from the Latin word volvere, meaning to twist. A cecal volvulus describes the torsion of the cecum around its mesentery, which often results in acute, subacute, or chronic bowel obstruction. If left untreated, a cecal volvulus can progress to bowel ischemia, necrosis, or perforation, and may even lead to a fecal peritonitis. So just a small note at the bottom of your screen. The mesentery is a continuous set of tissues which is formed by the double fold of peritoneum that attaches the intestines to the wall of the abdomen. So what actually happens in a cecal volvulus is that we have a twisting of the cecum around its mesentery, which is this double fold of peritoneum that makes sure that the bowel wall is anchored to the abdominal cavity. And when this occurs, because now there's sort of a twist here, none of the content in the cecum is able to pass through the large bowel. And this is going to cause quite a big problem indeed, because as we know, the small intestine attaches to the cecum because the cecum is the first part of the large bowel. And now that we have this twist in the cecum, we're going to have a bowel obstruction. So food and digested matter is going to continuously try to get into the cecum from the small bowel, but it isn't going to be going any further because there's now a blockage at this part. So as you can see, the cecum swells up to quite a big mass and it will be displaced out of its original position, more up in the abdomen. And because this process happens, we have bowel ischemia, which can occur at this point, and necrosis, and this whole cecal bag, which is the actual cecal volvulus, can now explode or perforate into the abdomen. And this will lead to a fecal peritonitis. So now let's talk about the mechanism of this action. So above, I put in a picture of the normal anatomy of the large intestine. And right down here, we can see that beautiful picture of the cecum. So the cecum is actually the first part of the large bowel that it also connects with the small intestine, which allows the small intestine to deposit digestive food into the large bowel. So I want to go from this normal image to this image down here. So this is the cecum again, and we can see this twisting and we can see what is the result here. We have the cecum which is now trapped and we still have that small bowel emptying into that cecum and then we have a bowel obstruction here because nothing is now able to enter the large bowel. In order for a cecal volvulus to develop, two conditions must be present. First, an abnormally mobile segment of the cecum and the colon and second, a fixed point around which the mobile segment can twist. So if we have a mobile segment, which means the mesentery around the cecum is not doing a good job in fixing it to the abdominal wall, we're going to have a mobile cecum. And when we have a mobile cecum, it's able to move around and to twist and to turn. And this is what actually causes a cecal volvulus. The second condition is created through normal ileocolic attachments as well as through abnormal adhesions after surgery or appendicitis. So any of these mechanisms can promote the development of a cecal volvulus. The clinical presentation. A cecal volvulus presents with clinical features of a proximal large bowel obstruction. So again, if the cecum is going to twist around, we're going to have a large bowel obstruction, so nothing's going to be able to get into that large bowel. This usually occurs together with a colicky abdominal pain because peristalsis is still occurring, so this is why we have this colicky pain, as well as vomiting and abdominal distension. So keep in mind that the small intestine is still trying to push content through this cecum, which is now unable to pass the food into the large bowel. And when the cecum dilates and becomes fully distended, the small bowels will also have some kind of dilation because they are now going to collect up with food and digested matter because nothing is going to be able to pass through here. So these patients, their bowels are going to swell and they're going to have some vomiting, some abdominal distension, some nausea. And if you look at my picture on the right, we have an image depicting a massively 
dilates the cecum with gangrenous patches. So when these parts of the bowel become twisted, their blood supply is also cut off. And this is what leads to the ischemic aspect of the bowel. So we'll have bowel ischemia. And when we have bowel ischemia long-standing, we're going to have gangrene. So this is actually quite an alarming sign indeed. So now let's talk about some other signs and symptoms occurring during a cecal valvulus. The patient will suffer severe constipation, abdominal distension, abdominal tenderness and tympanic distension, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting. And because of the nausea and vomiting, we're going to have dehydration and electrolyte imbalances. We will also have fever, tachycardia and the development of shock. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of a cecal valvulus. Lab tests including a complete blood count, a CBC, electrolyte and metabolic profiles can be helpful. An elevated white blood cell count together with fever indicate bowel ischemia, peritoneal infection or systemic sepsis. Bowel obstruction may cause significant changes in electrolyte levels. Other diagnostic studies include plain abdominal radiography, computer tomography, barium enema, and a sigmoidoscopy or colonoscopy. And in my picture above, we have a surgical view that shows a dilated air-filled displaced cecum with the dilated small bowel and a small bowel obstruction. So in the previous slide, I mentioned that a plain abdominal radiograph can be helpful in the diagnosis of a cecal valvulus. So let's see how. In the image below, we can see the cecum is grossly dilated and is no longer located in its anatomical position, which is the right iliac fossa. And in this case, the right iliac fossa is now occupied by small bowel. So usually the cecum is right down here in this right iliac fossa, but because it's dilated, it's distended, it is now pushed its way up into the abdomen, causing the patient to have a distended abdomen. And because the cecum has pushed its way up there, we now have this dilated portions of small bowel that is now occupying the right iliac fossa. And this is a diagnostic tool of a cecal valvulus. The cecal valvulus produces large and small bowel obstructions. Radiographic findings reveal a markedly distended loop of bowel extending from the right lower quadrant upward to the left upper quadrant. The small bowel is distended, whereas the distal colon is decompressed. Now we're going to also talk about a certain aspect that can be noted on the plain abdominal radiograph and that is the cecal embryo sign. So let's go back a bit. If you notice this dilated cecum up here, it sort of looks like a developing embryo. So if we go back here, we can see this cecal embryo sign and here we see the cecum which is grossly dilated and is not located in the right iliac fossa and the right iliac fossa is now occupied by the small bowel. And in the cecal valvulus, the dilated cecum takes on a shape similar to the mammalian embryo, and that is the formation of a large dilated cecal pole, which is the head, with one or two further segments of a body and tail, and that you're able to see quite clearly here. So continuing with the imagistic diagnostic techniques, we can do a CT, and a CT can delineate the exact site of the torsion and reveal evidence of ischemia. The image on the left shows an abdominal CT and the white arrows here point to the region of the twist in the cecum itself. So here are the twists of the cecum and we can see how largely dilated the cecum is. Another diagnostic tool we spoke about is the barium enema. The barium examination demonstrates a bird's beak deformity tapering at the point of the valvulus and that can be seen in the large white arrow. So at the point of the twist we have this bird beak appearance because barium is not able to fill up that area and so it's going to look sort of like a bird's beak and that gives us the bird's beak appearance in a cecal valvulus that can help with the diagnosis. We also note the dilated walls of the cecum. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of a cecal valvulus. The treatment for a cecal valvulus is surgery to correct the malrotation. 
The surgical options to correct the obstruction are manual detorsion, cecopexy, cecostomy, and colectomy, either by open or by laparoscopic methods for the correction of the intestinal obstruction. When intestinal gangrenous changes and perforations are encountered, the non-viable intestines should be resected. So I put in a few definitions at the bottom, which correlate to the different treatment options we have in terms of the surgery. So the first one is the manual detorsion, and this is the process of relieving torsion or unnatural twists within the body. We then have cecopexy, which is a surgical operation for anchoring the cecum to the abdominal wall. We then have a cecostomy, which is a surgical formation of a permanent artificial opening into the cecum. And finally, we have a colectomy, which is the removal of all or part of the large intestine. And that brings us to the end of this video on the cecal volvulus. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment and share. I hope you found the presentation very informative. And if you would like to download a copy of it, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.